You can use SketchUp or you can use a calculator to lay out these tubes so that they're perfectly centered. What I've done in SketchUp here is I've drawn two layout lines, one here on this side, whoops, and one over here on this side. And what I'll do is I'll move one of them in. I'm going to take the one on the right here and press the move key, hold down the control key, and move a copy of it in. And I'll hit the left mouse button. And I'm going to type in 1.25 inches in the lower right corner. You'll see I just entered that into the length and press the enter key and now that layout line right there is exactly an inch and a quarter from this one. I'm going to do the same thing from this side but first I'll select this one and now I'll press the M key for move and hold down the control key, move a copy of that over and enter 1.25 and now we've got both of those an inch and a quarter from this surface here. And that way, when I start setting these pipes, there'll be an even amount from each of these two styles. And now I want to get them centered between this space. If we were using a calculator, we'd want to find out what this dimension was. So we'd have to take a dimension from right here, and it's seven and a half, which makes sense, because if you subtract two and a half from ten inches, you end up with seven and a half. Now what we want to do in SketchUp though is we're going to take one of these layout lines and move it again. We can do this two different ways. I'm going to press the Move key and I'm going to move a copy again and I'm going to take that copy and put it right on top of this layout line and I'll make sure those are square. And now I'm going to press the Divide key the slash key once, and you'll see that's entering into the length column, into the length window down at the bottom. And I'm going to press the number six and enter. And there's exactly the layout for each one of the copper tubes that I want to put into the grill for these gates. And they measure exactly the same. Look, they're going to all be an inch and a quarter. No matter where we measure, no matter which ones we measure, they'll all be an inch and a quarter because seven and a half divides evenly by an inch and a quarter so there won't be any kind of cumulative error or anything in here. Another way to do this is with a calculator. We take the seven and a half figure and we'll divide that by six on the calculator. So seven and a half divided by six equals an inch and a quarter. And if you take an inch and a quarter and add it to itself, it's two and a half and then press the equals key and you'll get three and three quarters for the next layout line. Press the equals key again and you'll get five inches. Press the equals key again and you'll get six and a quarter. And press the equals key one more time, you'll get seven and a half. That way I was able to get each one of the bars located precisely on these rails so that when I drill the holes, they'll be plumb top to bottom. And I also made this little uh, story pole so I won't have to lay out each one. I'll just score a line, scrub a line right down the center of this. Should be, yep, about three quarters of an inch on each side. And then I'll take that little story pole and I'll just put it right near that line and I'll just transfer these lines across. That's a lot easier than measuring every time because if you measure every time you're going to make a mistake and if you look at this, you can see, yeah, the story pole is reversible. So you don't have to worry about having it in one specific direction or something. These will end up being centered no matter what direction this little story pole is in. Now I'm going to set this drill press up so it'll drill these holes exactly three quarters. Actually, I think I'll drill them like seven eighths of an inch deep. And I'll set the drill press up so that the spade bit is just about flush with the top of this two by and then tighten down this stop so the bit won't move, it'll stay right there. And then I can come over here to this side and dial in this depth gauge until it's at 7 eighths of an inch right there. And now, if I let go of the stop here, the bit will only come down that far. It'll hit the zero stop here at 7 eighths of an inch and all of my holes will be precisely 7 eighths of an inch deep.